Welcome Houdini audience all around the world. In the second part of this tutorial, I will show you how to build a procedural setup in Houdini that generates ammonite shells. Please watch the first part if you have not watched it already first. To start with, I will show an overview of the Houdini setup and later in this tutorial series, I will come back to the most important stages and nodes used in the setup and to explain the concepts in much more detail. However, I think it is important to first look at an overview of this procedural modeling setup. This is the interface to set the parameters for the curve generation. The points making up the curve will get two attributes, p-scale and orient. Remember, I will come back to this in much more detail later, so don't worry too much, as this is a quick overview of the setup. This is the other interface to set up the number of chambers and the rhythm, or better, the sizes of the individual chambers. For that, I use a line with the desired number of points, same as the amount of chambers. Every point represents one of the chambers. Each point of the line will get attributes chamber length, chamber start, and also chamber end. After creating the sizes of the chambers, the spiral will be resampled to the desired number of total points. And the p-scale attribute will be interpolated by the resample SOP. To be able to set the values interactively, a nicely colored preview representation of the ammonite will be generated. This helps a lot when adjusting the spiral and the chamber size settings. The geometry setup to generate the geometry starts by creating a polygon version of the chambers. For the round chamber dividing walls, the septers, a flattened sphere-like shape is generated. This flattened sphere will be added to both sides of the chamber segments. No boolean is needed, we have overlapping geo here, but that does not matter, you will see shortly why. Those shapes are now converted to an SDF VDB volume. A VDB, a volumetric dynamic grid that shares several characteristics with B-trees. And SDFs is a signed distance field. And again, more about what that is in a later part of this tutorial series. So the important takeaway here is that from now on, it is volumetric data and not polygons that we deal with. The previous chamber segment is subtracted from the next following chamber. This is very similar to booleans when dealing with polygons, but here we are dealing with a volume representation. To create the self-intersections, the setup creates partial shapes of the ammonite that end at minimum one segment before the segment they are subtracted from. This setup uses loops at many stages. In the previous slide, I showed one of the subtractions. Here, you can see that this is of course repeated for all the chamber parts. As a result, we get the subtracted shapes Remember, this is still a SDF VDB volume. Now, the volumes of the chambers are converted to polygon mesh. The chamber's shapes are now basically finished. Now we also need the outer shell that also includes the last open chamber. When creating the chambers, I made sure the last chamber is double the length that is shown in the end. As I don't want a simple straight flat cut to the end, the last chamber gets cut in half with a nice banded cutter. A little sphere is added to fill the center gap. From the resulting shape, the last chamber gets subtracted. Now, this is also converted to polygon mesh. Now we only need to combine the inner chamber shapes and the outer shell to get the final shape. And a cut open ammonite looks much cooler, so we cut that in half now to get a beautiful ammonite shape. Here, a quick render I made a while ago. You can thank me via Patreon, but my tutorials will still be free for everybody. Thanks for watching.